Assalamu alaikum, my name is Dr. Ashik Hussain. I am Assistant Professor of Anatomy at Rashi Latif Medical College. In this video, I am going to discuss about the cranial cavity. But uh, before uh, cranial cavity, I would like to give you uh, an, a full view of the st uh, structure of what we will uh, be talking about. So this is the anterior view of the uh, skull, which is showing two orbits, nasal cavity. And then this is the cranial cavity. I am using this model with different, you know, where you can see different bones which are formed by different colors. So you can have a deep insight of the, you know, uh, of the subject. So here we can see that this is uh, a cranial cavity. Here you can see the anterior cranial fossa, this purple one, and this is middle cranial fossa, and this is posterior cranial fossa. And all these cranial fossa, fossae, they lie at different level. The superior most level is the anterior cranial fossa, then middle cranial fossa at lower than the anterior, and this is the lowest of all. So this anterior cranial fossa, we, I would be, you know, look at the boundaries. What are the boundaries of anterior cranial fossa? And here you can see the anterior cranial fossa. Uh, this is uh, uh, this anterior cranial fossa. You can see this is purple bone, which is actually a frontal bone. Uh, mm, frontal bone and this here off white color bone which you can see here this is the ethmoid bone so again from the anterior point of view this is the frontal bone which is forming the forehead and roof of the uh, orbit the uh, roof of the orbit is also formed by the frontal bone so in short frontal bone it has got two two plates this is a vertical plate and this is horizontal plate vertical plate is forming the you know, forehead and horizontal plate of the uh, uh, frontal bone, it is, it is forming the roof of the orbit and floor of the anterior cranial fossa. And same floor of the anterior cranial fossa in the midline, it is being formed by the ethmoid bone. This is crista gli within the center, uh, crista gli, and on either side of the crista gli, we have got cribriform plate. Cribriform, cribri means small, you know, openings or small you know, uh, uh, sieve-like on either side. And here, actually, two uh, of the olfactory bulbs, they actually place on either side of the crystal gli on these uh, cribriform plates. So what are these small openings are meant for? Actually, just below uh, this cribriform bone, it is the uh, uh, roof of the uh, it, it is roof of the uh, nasal cavity and where the olfactory mucosa is present. Olfactory mucosa has got, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, different, uh, there are neurons, uh, olfactory cells which are present, they are actually neurons and their axons actually pass through these small openings and they enter the, uh, um, enter the, uh, what you call the two um, olfactory bulbs. So on the posterior aspect, this is the cephnoid bone which you can see in the light green color. This is called the cephnoid bone. Cephnoid bone has got certain parts. This is le this is lesser wing of the cephnoid bone. This is the greater wing of the cephnoid bone. Lesser wing of the cephnoid bone. Greater wing of the cephnoid. And in this center, it is the body of the cephnoid bone. So in total, what is our frontal bone? Vertical plate, frontal bone, horizontal plate, which is forming the roof of the orbit or floor of the anterior cranial fossa. Here you can see it is not smooth, rather it has got different impressions. So it is just, it accommodates actually the inferior surface of the uh, frontal lobe of the uh, cerebral hemisphere. So that's why the, the uh, uh, inferior surface of the frontal lobe has got sulci gyri. So these impressions actually accommodate the uh, correspondingly the sulci and gyri of the frontal lobe. So posterior border, it is on lateral side, it is uh, of the anterior cranial fossa, it is formed by these lesser wings and in the midline this is jugum and this is sulcus chiasmaticus, uh, uh, sulcus chiasmaticus and these are clinoid processes. So clinoid processes and look at the, uh, uh, these are two openings which are called optic canals optic canals. Here passes the optic nerve along with the ophthalmic artery. Actually, these optic canals are present immediately medial to the uh, you know, clinoid process. Then we have got, this is called superior orbital fissure. This is called superior orbital fissure. Actually, this fissure is a gap between greater wing of cephonite and lesser wing of cephonite. So from here, the structure which pass into the orbit. 
and uh, all the nerves which supply the extraocular muscles, which uh, which are all the muscles of the ex uh, extraocular muscles are supplied by oculomotor nerve, so oculomotor nerve, and lateral rectus, which is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve, and superior oblique, which is supplied by the trochlear nerve. They all passes do, through mm, mm, this uh, superior orbital fissure into the orbit. And this is the body of the cephnoid. So central body of the cephnoid on body of the cephnoid. This is cella tarsica, which means Turkish saddle. It has got four parts. Number one is tuberculum celli, uh, uh, tuberculum celli, sulcus chiasmaticus, hypophysial fossa or pituitary fossa, and this is dorsum celli. So dorsum celli has got posterior clinoid processes as well. So <clears throat> again, this lesser wing greater wing and this is optic canal this is superior op uh, ophthalm uh, uh, optic uh, ophthalmic fissure uh, superior orbital fissure and here comes the uh, you know foramen of rotundum from foramen of rotundum passes the uh, maxillary division of trigeminal nerve i call this call, call this uh, foramen max zero max zero so it always reminds me that this is Foramen of rotundum, rho, and maxi, maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. And here comes the uh, here comes the uh, uh, foramen of ovale. Foramen ovale because of its oval shape and it is rounded shape, so that's why it is called rotundum. And this is uh, oval shape, so that's why this is called ovale. Just posterior lateral to ovale. Here we have got foramen of spinosum. This is foramen of spinosum. This foramen of spinosum actually middle meningeal artery passes through this foramen. And look at this groove. Look at this groove. This groove here. This groove. This groove. This is the groove for the middle meningeal artery. Middle meningeal artery grooves the in, uh, internal surface of the cranium. So, and that middle meningeal artery enters the uh, cranial cavity, middle cranial fossa through this foramen of spinosum. So, to me, very it is very easy to find out where foramen of spinosum is. Actually, I f trace back this groove, and this groove takes me back to the foramen of spinosum. So, on either side, if you follow the groove, if you follow the groove, it will take you to the uh, you know foramen of spinosum and here comes the uh, foramen of lacerum on either side from where actually the internal carotid artery enters the cranium after passing through the internal carotid uh, canal carotid canal and um, mm, this pink one here you can see that this pink one it is actually temporal bone temporal bone so T uh, t uh, temp uh, t uh, temporal bone. If I just turn it upside down to just to show you that this, uh, mm, these are lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid plate. They are also shown in in the you know light green color. So actually, these two plates are part of uh, you know foramen. Uh, these these are part of um, uh, cephnoid bone. Uh, cephnoid bone. So um, you can very well imagine how cephnoid bone is, uh, you know, uh, what parts it comprise of and how it is, uh, where, and up, up to up till where it is extending. So this is temporal bone. Temporal bone has got two main parts. This is squamous part, squamous part, and this is petrous part. The squamous word squamous came from the scale, like like a scales on the body of a fish. So look at this part, this is flat from side to side, so that's why this pink bone is called squamous bone. And look at this, the word comes from the petrus. Petrus came from the word pietra, which means stone or rock. Just look at the superior surface of these bones, it seems like that it is a mm, mm, rock or a stone. So this is petrus part, this is squamous part. So look at these two, these are internal acoustic meatus. From this internal acoustic, acoustic meatus, actually, you know, uh, facial nerve, uh, vestibular cochlear nerve and labyrinthine artery, it enters or leaves the uh, uh, internal ear. Labyrinthine artery, why? Because the innermost ear which has got cochlea and semicircular canal and it appears like a, uh, you know, Mm, uh, it appears like a labyrinth, labyrinth maze or bhul bhulanya in for uh, Indian or uh, my Pakistani students. Uh, so bhul bhulanya. So, does, so that's why this artery, which is supplying the innermost ear, it has been named as uh, uh, you know mm, uh, labyrinthine artery. And now 
look at the this 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 light green bone again it is actually occipital bone look at this this is clivus which is this is foramen magnum foramen magnum actually it is opening within the occipital bone this this green one this occipital bone and foramen of magnum this is clivus and here we have two you know openings which are called uh, hypoglossal canal because it uh, from here hypoglossal nerves it leaves the cranial cavity and uh, then we can uh, look at these two, uh, you know, impression. These are two impression on either side. Uh, it has uh, uh, these impressions are uh, are for uh, transverse sinus. Transverse sinus when it moves further ahead, it change its shape into sigmoid sinus, S-shaped sigma. So transverse sinus converts into sigmoid sinus and in ultimately reaches the jugular foramen. From jugular foramen along with the inferior petrosal sinus, uh, it, when it joins it, from jugular foramen it uh, moves out to forming a jugular vein. So to me, jugular foramen is very easy to find out. I actually, you know, trace uh, these, uh, you know, uh, tra trace these uh, transverse sinus on either side, then sigmoid sinus, and it will f uh, ultimately take me to the jugular foramen. So this was, uh, and this is, you know, yellow one where you can see this yellow one is the parietal uh, bone. So frontal bone, vertical plate, horizontal plate, ethmoid bone, cribriform plates, and here comes the foramen of cecum. This internal occipital front uh, crest here between crest and crista gilae we have got foramen cecum, cribriform plate, lesser wing on either side, greater wings, and this is a uh, clinoid process. And uh, then we have got uh, optic canal for cella trasica, body of saphenoid, dorsum celli, sulcus chasmaticus, tuberculum celli. Then we have got superior orbital fissure, foramen of rotundum, then foramen of a whale, foramen spinosum. Here comes the uh, uh, your foramen of lacerum, internal acoustic me meatus, then jugular foramen, and this is hypoglossal canal. A squamous part of the temporal bone, petrous part of the temporal bone, parietal bones, and these are the, you know, uh, groove for the middle meningeal artery, which uh, which I will trace back, and it will lead me to the foramen of spinal. Bone. So this was the bit, or uh, you know, in detail about the cranial cavity. Uh, inshallah, within next videos, I would be uh, talking about uh, uh, normal lateralis and from the uh, base uh, basal aspect as well. Uh, of the of the cranial cavity so i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you very much